I want to praise God just for his goodness and his grace. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While you're looking for that, I'm going to take the pastoral liberty to say happy birthday, Brother Eugene Red. Amen. 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 God bless you, man. God bless you. Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. There we find these words written. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. From those passages of scripture, I want to talk this morning from this thought. A common experience for the uncommonly good church. A common experience for the uncommonly good church. Sometimes back, if you recall, in June, when we began this series in Acts, God was pleased that we preached to you from the subject of a sermon, an uncommonly good church. Okay. It was at that time that we made the points that an uncommonly good church was one that had an uncommonly good worship. They had an uncommonly good concern for others. And they had an uncommonly good witness. These three characteristics I just mentioned were evident in the New Testament church at Jerusalem. And during that sermon also, I referenced something about the Keebler Cookie Company. And how it began and continued its mission to create an uncommonly good cookie. And that uncommonly good cookie at the time, I made an analogy for the uncommonly good church. Some of y'all remember that. M many of you made it known to me at that time that you couldn't recall eating a Keebler cookie. And, and, and what that sermon did for you, if you didn't get nothing else out of it, what it did for you was to make you have a desire for some cookies. Y'all remember that, don't you? Well, we're going to take care of that today. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you, man. Now, I just need y'all just be patient. Y'all just sit still. Y'all just sit still. Is that your favorite color, too? Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Yet, because they're going to be a part of this message this morning. And if you give me about 15 more minutes, we're going to get ready to go. In the text today, this is the third time that this experience of receiving the Holy Ghost has happened in the book of Acts. There's one more experience of the Holy Spirit coming in Acts chapter 19, but I'm not going to deal with that this morning. We saw in Acts chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. With the apostles who are Jews on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came and filled them and they spake with tongues and the Spirit gave them utterance as Peter preached the word. 
in Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, it happened to the Samaritans, where they were apostles at Jerusalem, and, and the Samaritans received the word of God and sent Peter and John to them. When they came, they prayed for them, and the Holy Ghost came to them. And now here in Acts chapter 10, with Cornelius and the Gentiles, and I trust that you read chapter 10 like I sent the message for you to read chapter 10 in Acts the other day. They receive the Holy Spirit now, and these three events are representative of those nations receiving the Holy Spirit from this time on. And what we need to notice is the fact that while each nation came with a different understanding of God and his Christ, the Holy Ghost brought a common experience to all of them, putting them on one accord, just like you get in these cookies Give all of you a common experience. How can you be? How, 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 how can that be, Pastor? Well, just stay with me and I'm going to show you. We're going to get out of here. In each one of the texts where the Holy Spirit is given, it says they received or heard the word of God. And the word that they heard was centered around the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In similar fashion, and in each instance when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they spake in tongues. And the speaking in tongues was an intelligible language that was not native to those speaking them, but it was known by those that was hearing them speak, okay? In similar fashion, and in each instance afterwards, they were baptized as a sign of their identification with Christ. And last but not least, in similar fashion, each instance that the Holy Spirit came on the Jews, Gentiles, and the Samaritans, they magnified God and shared their experience with someone else. Now, here is where you get to participate. Everybody on this side over here, what is the name of your cookie? What's the name of the cookies? On, I said this side. I ain't talking about y'all back here. I, this side. Pay attention. Follow instructions, y'all. On this side, what's the name of the cookies? Fudge Stripes. Stripes. All right. Does anybody else have a different name of a cookie? You shouldn't be saying anything. All right. In the center. On the back of the cookie, how many calories does your pack have? How many? 280. Does anyone else have anything different from that? All right, y'all doing good. On this side only, as far as you know, who purchased and gave you those cookies? All right, all right. Anybody else got anything different from that? All right. Last, last, last question, last question, and I'm going to the choir, and I'm going to ask y'all this, and this goes to everybody too, but I'm going to the choir. Did any of you do anything to deserve those cookies? Anybody got a different answer? Right. See, the common experience each of you just had as it relates to receiving the cookies is similar to the common experience that each group had in receiving the Holy Spirit. You got the same name. You got the same content, you got the same source, and nobody was deserving of anything. Now, 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 let me read something for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. I'm going to make another point. It says, in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. 
But all these workers that one and self same spirit divide into every man severally as he will. All right? In other words, God gives the Holy Spirit the way he wants to, to who he wants to, and the gifts he wants to give them to. All right? Now, now, I need to ask those of you, look at your bags. How many of you have a bag that has a pink tab on it? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you got a pink tab, raise your hand high. All right? If you got a pink tab on it, raise your hand. You got to look at the front of the bag. All right, the dot, the dot, the dot on the bag. It's a dot on the front of the bag. The dot on the front of the bag. It's a, anybody got a pink dot on the bag? All right, all right. How many of you have a green dot on your bag? All right. How many of you have a yellow dot on your bag? All right. And how many of you don't even have a dot on the bag? All right. Okay. All right. Now, now. What is the difference that you all have in the, in, in, as far as what you've been given today? What's, what's the only difference? The dot on the bag. Either you got a, a colored dot or not a dot at all, right? Okay. Did any of you determine the colored dot you got on your bag? That's right. You, you didn't determine what color you got. You was given what you received, but all you received the same thing inside the bag. And I made sure that I was the one that gave it to you so you can say so-and-so didn't give me. Or I got mine from so-and-so. No, can't nobody say that. See, all of us who trusted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord have received the same Holy Spirit in full measure. The only difference is the spiritual gift that you have and how you will use it now to edify the body. Okay? See, see nobody can say, I got something that you didn't get. A mine is better than yours. See, that's what Peter had to declare to the other Jews who came with him. When the Holy Spirit came on these Gentiles, Peter said, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? See, the Gentiles had the same experience as the Jews and the Samaritans, and nobody could deny it. And each of you had a common experience being given a gift that you did not deserve. And if you notice this, watch this now. You were given that not only for some, for you to profit with all, but you got an extra in there to share with somebody else. See, that's the reason we've been given the Holy Spirit, to edify the body of Christ and to magnify God thereby. Gifts are not given to you to be all glorified in yourself. The gifts of the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts are given to edify the body. So what are you going to do with your gift? How, how are you going to use your spiritual gift that God has given you to edify somebody else? Remember, an uncommonly good church will have a common experience that should make her a unified and effective witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what is the common experience? Well, here it is. I'm going to give you three points, and we're going to get ready to celebrate the Lord's Supper. We have a common gift. That's the Holy Spirit. We have a common giver. That's a holy God. And we have a common goal. That's to edify the body and magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. That's an uncommonly good church, y'all. That's an uncommonly good experience 
that our God gives to us because he decided of his own free will and accord one day to send his son Jesus to die at Calvary for our sins. He was crucified, dead, and buried, put in a tomb, but on the third day, according to scriptures, he got out of the grave with all power and authority in his hand. And now he's given us all the spirit to be his witnesses to everybody we come in contact with. Jews, Samaritan, Gentile, does not matter. Black, white, green, blue, does not matter. You have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Be a witness unto him and share his sweetness with someone else. Pray with me this morning. Pray with me. Pray with me. Pray with me. God, through your Holy Spirit, you have saved us. You have sanctified us. You've baptized us into Christ. You've given us spiritual gifts to edify the church. Help us now, God, to be obedient in order that we might magnify the Lord Jesus Christ and glorify your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And amen. He does. Amen. As we now come to participate and partake and to remember what God has done for us through his son, Jesus, who is Christ. Let us now prepare to share in the Lord's Supper. If you have not received any of the elements, raise your hand high, and our ushers will get one to you. Everyone in the audience receive an element. Those who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and been baptized, you can come and you may partake. Amen. This is one of the ordinances that the Lord gave to his church. And we need to recognize it as such. It's not to be trivialized. It's not to be done flippantly. But it's a serious matter because our faith hinges on what he did for us. Amen? Amen. On the night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, take ye this. This is my body that is broken for you. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. And like man, after he'd given them the bread, he took the cup. And he poured it, he said, take ye, drink this. This is my blood that is shed for you. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. Paul, in his letter to the church at Corinth, reminded them that when you come together, be sure that you discern the Lord's body in order that you do not eat or drink damnation to your soul. Let us pray. Father, we come now saying thank you for this privilege of being a body as one in Christ. Now with the opportunity to come and to remember and to celebrate, God, what Christ did for us at Calvary. And so as we partake in these elements that represent the broken body of his shed blood, we do so with thanksgiving and with joy, looking forward to the day that he shall come and receive his church in glory and power. Thank you now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was broken for us all. Let's eat together, my brothers and sisters. And now the blood of Christ that was shed for the rest of our sins. Let's drink together, my brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for what you have allowed us to experience, what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. And Father, let us go away rejoicing and thanking you 
for not only what you have done, but for who you are. Thank you for your word. Continue to allow us to read, obey, and apply it in a way that glorifies you. We thank thee now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As we go away, again, let us thank God for his grace to us. Let us continue to pray for one another, and let's continue to glorify him in all that we do. Let us stand together as we share in our departure chorus. As you go, forgive somebody. Someone needs forgiveness now. As the opportunity presents itself, share the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, share the love of Jesus Christ.